What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, great day. Uh, it's been a busy one for me. I've got shredded chicken upstairs that I've done. I've got some, uh, uh, oh, I've got oh, the big sub for the weekend. Um, we're going to be doing a jerk chicken sub. I just did a sample of it. Oh, my God. And I got some Calypso sauce. It's hot. Uh, DMV, I want to see you take the Calypso sauce. That That's some hot stuff right there. That's That's getting close to the chip challenge. You put enough of it on there. Maybe we'll do some Calypso wings. They definitely would be firing the whole wings. Anyway, tomorrow night, in fact, <clears throat> we have one day, 23 hours, 28 minutes, and 50 seconds until kickoff of the Cowboys versus the San Francisco 49ers. But tomorrow night, we've got the Eagles and the Giants. And Cop Pizzle and Philly 500 are going to stream together. They're going to be streaming together. It might break the internet, and we're going to be watching. <clears throat> we will definitely be watching. I cannot wait. So here's the funny thing. No matter what happens with the Cowboys, the goalposts get moved. All we've been hearing that, you know, all these other quarterbacks are better quarterbacks that Dak Prescott still has more to prove than, than everybody else. Um, with the quarterbacks that are left, Dak Prescott's got more wins than any of them. In fact, Dak Prescott has as many wins as all of them combined and then some. Understand at the moment, Daniel Jones is the only other quarterback in the NFC that has a playoff win. So Dak has some experience. But listen to this. Dak Prescott has a lot to prove. I do. All right, here's the deal. The divisional round hasn't been kind to the Dallas Cowboys for quite some time. America's team has lost its last six appearances in the divisional round of the playoffs and has not been to an NFC championship game since 1995, the last time they won a Super Bowl. Stephen A., I'd like to start with you. Since Notice how we keep so dearly. finding uh, more. How much pressure yeah, is the on Dak to prove himself? <sighs> There's immense pressure as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people have been walking around over the last few days, four to be exact, acting like because you beat a team that was clearly older, uh, wasn't on your level, and oh, by the way, in desperate need of new coaching since people are getting fired there, the reality of the situation is that Dak Prescott did what he was supposed to do. He deserves major props for it in all seriousness. He truly, truly does. But I don't think that it's beyond the pale to remind the NFL audience out there, including the two aficionados on the air with me right now who have forgotten more football than I know because they played the damn game and I lean on their knowledge to learn as much as I learn. The fact of the matter is I'm a good, I'm a damn good student. And the reality is, is that I have been taught that the San Francisco 49ers are on a significantly higher level than the t this version of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so the challenge that Dak Prescott faced Monday night is nothing compared to what he's going to face this weekend. And I think because of that, we're looking at Dak Prescott, certainly not the same kind of pressure. He had to beat an inferior team and had to show out against them. Otherwise, you know, his, his name would have been mud and we get all of that. In this particular instance, if he wasn't that effective, it's not like he's going to lose his job, not gonna, he's, gonna get, he's not going to get paid. It's not like he's not going to be the starting quarterback next year. But what it will remind us of is that there are levels to this, and Dak Prescott just ain't on it as of yet. That's what a game of this caliber means against a team of this caliber in the San Francisco 49ers. So, yes, there's some big-time pressure on him. 
Whenever you're the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, there's going to be pressure on you. It's the team that we as a network cover the most. It's the team that gets the highest ratings. It's the team that's worth the most in all of professional sports and the four major sports in America. Like, we're used to that. We know that about this team. Here is why there's more pressure on Dak Prescott right now. And I disagree with Stephen A. and some of the things that he said because of this. The San Francisco 49ers are what we perceive to be the better team. But I do believe that many people look at this game and say that if the Dallas Cowboys are the team that we saw Monday night, they can beat anybody in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys that we saw Monday night, both offensively and defensively, are the best team in football. And so now it's, can you raise your level of play to that mm -hmm. when you're playing a team that is more talented than the Tampa Bay, Buc Tampa Bay Buccaneers, when you're playing a team that is better coached than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and when you're playing a team that has better and more momentum than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's not about do the Dallas Cowboys have the people to beat the San Francisco 49ers, because I believe they do. And you got an opportunity to see that on Monday night. But it's do they show up? And in showing up, does number four show up? Because now we don't get to have the conversation of, is Dak Prescott just not talented enough? Can Dak Prescott use his legs to get outside of the pocket? Hell yeah, we saw it. Can Dak Prescott protect the football when he needs to? Hell yeah, we saw it. Can Dak Prescott make the correct throws? Does he have the talent to make every throw on the field? Hell yeah, we saw it. Now you got to go show it. Now you got to step up, earn the money that you were given and say, this is not about just being here. It's about excelling while I'm here. And if Dak Prescott doesn't do that, the type of criticism that will be heaped on him will be monumental. I'm not coming to work on Monday if the Dallas Cowboys lose because I don't want to deal with Southern Steve. I'm going to stay <laughs> tell in New Orleans. I'm going to call in the Sam. I'm going to call Antoine. I'm going to call James. I'm going to text Stephen A and say, I can't make it. I have the flu. And even with saying that, I'm going to do get up first and then leave because I'm not going to want to hear what's going to be said about the Cowboys <laughs> if they do lose. Mm. I mean, listen, what wow. we're talking about is consistency and living up to expectations, right? It, you know, Dak Prescott, his whole story is, a, is the American story. We all love the underdog. But he's not the underdog. When you look at the field, he's the brand name. He's the guy, right? We fought for him to say, hey, man, he deserves to become a franchise quarterback. We want to put him in the top ten. We want to say he's an elite quarterback. If he can't beat this field of quarterbacks, then when will he ever, you know, take the Dallas Cowboys to the promised land? And to do that, mm. he's going to have to be the difference. Because when you look at it, all things are even, right? It's talent on both sides of the football. You got, you know, guys that can play in the trenches. You got, listen, box office defensive players, right? I think you have right now uh, the, the match, the final match and the deciding factor about who's going to be the defensive player of the year. It stars on both sides. But you're telling me that you, can, you beat Benjamin Button last week. That's to be expected. You can't beat a Purdy. You mean to tell me that the story and the narrative that's going to be, be written is that Brock Purdy is continuing to ride this Cinderella story. This mm -hmm. is when Dak Prescott is supposed to show us that he's elite. That this he can kill the, the dream. We've seen Super Bowls where Joe Flacco has won a Super Bowl. We've seen Super Bowls that, that featured Nick Foles winning a Super Bowl. If you're supposed to be this elite quarterback, then you're supposed to be the defining factor. That's why the pressure is on Dak Prescott to step up and be a force multiplier, to elevate in a tough environment. It's never easy for that road to greatness, right? But if he wants to be considered a franchise quarterback worthy of the money, worthy of losing a guy like Amari Cooper, because eventually, whenever you get paid that money, you have to start looking at your teammates to see which one you want to cut. So I want to see what is Pre Dak Prescott made out of. Was last week an admiration or is that the new norm? Can he get his team on his back? We've seen Super Bowls that feature Eli Manning going into a zone. We've seen Joe Flacco go through a zone, not having any turnovers. Mm -hmm. Can this be the beginning of a beautiful story about Dak Prescott ascending and becoming a brand name? He's the brand name on this side of the ball. It's not Danny Dimes. Jalen Hurts just got invited to the party, and Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant. So if Dak Prescott can't win now, then when can he beat? Because this division is only going to get better. Okay. Well, a couple of things that I wanted to say, just a couple of things as an aside, you know, that's the beauty of first take, you know, 
The fact of the matter is, is that both of you just sound so brilliant, so eloquent in your words, your diction, and how and what you delivered in the substance and the content under what you're saying. What's the so but? Touching. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say that. The, 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 the beauty of Here it all go. is that you could have just said it in one sentence. We agree with Stephen A. I mean, that's all you have to say. That's all you have to say. <laughs> okay. You know, it, it's kind of funny where, you know, you listen to Colin Cowherd, who was saying things like yesterday, well, you know, uh, Dak Prescott had a great game, but, you know, he was shaky to start the game, and, you know, uh, there were drop passes. Did he drop the passes? So, by definition, if they drop the pass, that means they had to have a chance to catch the pass, which means that's on the receiver, not the quarterback. Am I crazy here? But now we're going through where we've told, been told that Dak's not you know, one of those guys. I think Colin Cowherd was literally saying that Dak Prescott was like not even in the top 15. He was naming guys like Derek Carr and Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson, you know, and all these quarterbacks, Pat Mahomes, and, you know, all these quarterbacks, Joe Burrow and Trey Lance. I mean, he named just about every quarterback that was out there, even Carson Wentz. And now it's, well, you know, Dak has to cement his legacy. It's a failure if he doesn't win. Come on, people. Come on, people. Enough already. All right, we will see you guys at 9 o'clock right now. I got prime time and game time on tap right now. I'm going to enjoy them. I'll see you soon.